Et quoi Psst. Psst. Master. Ivana. <laughs> now, where'd you get that? Drop that. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, drop that glove. Being crazy over there. Of course, they were long. Inkwell, no sir. Inkwell is getting a hazing. That's what we call it. Because he's been being a brat. The other dogs are picking on him. And then he's redirecting. Trying to pick on others after he gets beat up. Very bad behavior. I say that because that's a dog that's going to have a tendency to redirect onto others when he's upset about something or overexcited. Although, technically, it's a good thing that the pack is dealing with him. We allow things to a certain extent. There are just certain things that we step in on or try to get them to understand that they need to listen simply when we tell them not to do something. Saturday 
I think it's like one o'clock. Maybe it's twelve. I don't know. Lunchtime. Mama's being dumb and he keeps following Sassy. Sassy has been bred. Uh, well, she was bred by Yufu. And she wasn't taking any more breedings. And it was like four days after her last breeding. I had her out in the house because, I mean, like she's done. She wasn't accepting breeding. Nothing like that. And she wasn't. But Lopilli decided to run up and uh, randomly have a slip tie with her. It's not something she allowed. He just did it so fast. So we may or may not end up with puppies from him. We're going to brown test them to see um, whether Yufu or Lapilli is the sire. First time we've had something like that happen, but I mean, it's to be expected that things may happen eventually. And it wasn't due to a lack of caution either because none of the other males were bothering her. Um, no one was interested. The pilly just was being a horn dog. And I hope that's all it was. And she was not still in the process of conceiving. So we'll have to wait and see. That's the Pilly right there. He is Obi's son. Obi and Yokai's son. Yokai is not here with us anymore. Um, he went to a new home at the beginning of this week. And hopefully he's doing very well. The last update, he seemed to be doing pretty good. Obi's we'll still looking for a home. As well as Suki. And Inkwell. And probably Hibana. Um, I don't think we're going to use her again. For various reasons. We'll get into that once we know more. But probably not going to use her again. Mm -hmm. And yes, she's got a cone on. She, um, see her eyeball. She had a few days right after the big storm we had recently where she was going down um, kind of down behind that tree down there up against the woods and she was slipping out of the gate as well and going into the smoggy bottom down there and my best guess is that um, she uh, got chewed up by some sort of bug and she had a bit of a strong reaction to it but that wasn't just it we it didn't look bad it really didn't it was like one little spot that I was a little bloody from the bugs chewing on it and then she scratched it really bad through the night and it got really bad instantly and we've had a cone on her since which has helped it heal because she's not scratching it. But it's still still healing. Still bored. So I had one major complaint about dogs is the fact that it's incredibly difficult to get them to heal from something because they're so obsessive about scratching or biting it or licking it or whatever. I mean, there have been dogs known to chew the darn leg off just because it's got a wound. Just eating the roots. <laughs> I have it. Whoa, slow down, slow down. You guys. Coming in too hot. Inkwell. Psh. You foo. Psh. Gee, she's still in heat. Um, so she's inside. Sister's in heat. She's inside. Of course, is back out here. Um, so we were going to breed the horse with nine. She started what seemed like a heat. 
after having a weird cyst thing on her vulva. Um, cyst abscess like thing. Uh, I popped it and it healed. But after that she had a weird, what seemed like a heat. Um, but she never became receptive that we saw or noticed or even trying to pair. She would not accept any breeding. So the course has not been bred. Um, I think we're looking to try and potentially take her in to a reproductive specialist just to make sure everything's fine. Because it was very odd. Um, and if everything's fine, we'll try again on the, her next heat. Compare her with nine. Uh, I think we decided, mutually decided, that we weren't going to pair her with Breo if Breo decides to live long enough and we can get his sperm quality back up because it tanked. Um, I think it was from when he had the neck thing. Then we're going to pair him with um, Petal. And that's a better match, in my opinion, um, than the chorus. Anyway, so it's not a bad thing. It's just Petal's young, so Freya will be much older. And we may not ever get a breeding from him, I don't know. We'll see. That's the, the drawback to... Um, Waiting a lot longer before breeding the animals. You know, waiting for them to age. Is you may not ever get a breeding, or you may lose an animal in between, or you never know. You never know what will happen. I'm not, um, Proponing, not proponing, that's not the word. <laughs> Promoting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little tired. Last night was a much with um, Starlight's puppies were a bit fussy. They seem a little bit more settled this morning. We'll see how they do tonight. Um. Hoi! Leave Sassy alone! You see Mama aggravating her? Anyway, I'm not promoting breeding when they're so dang young. You know, first heats and all that. Whoa! If it's like Sacer, I mean, she just had her first heat and she's only eight months old. You know, that's way too young. Um, but waiting after two years old, for me, personally, is um, for the females, not so much the males, but for the females... There's, I would say, added risks of various things. Um, one thing that I feel like has been consistent is that the heats, a uh, third or fourth heat, consecutive heat from our females has always been a little weird. Now, is it coincidence? Because this year has been strange for a lot of people and it just coincided that way. With some of our females being the third and fourth heat, that's entirely possible. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have proof of anything. All I know is I feel like Love Me, who we bred on her second heat, I believe. Right? No, she had a heat at eight months. We bred her. Maybe it was on her third heat. Because she was right at two years old when she gave birth. Um, it went so smoothly. It went so well. You know, no problems. Nothing. Um, and um, you know, I don't know. I feel like the other ones have been more difficult when we've waited longer, but... I'm just watching them, making sure they're behaving themselves. Um, 
again, coincidence? I don't know. You know, I really don't know. There's also, it's just been difficult sometimes. We want to do a pairing, but the male we want to use ends up not fertile that year for, because he got some sort of infection, you know. And that's not exclusive to um, the collies, although I would say I feel like they're very prone to it. Um, because we've seen it happen in other breeds too. Um, even to the degree that a male can have a systemic infection that you can't even see in any sort of form. It's just like in, in his body somehow. And that makes him completely um, sterile. And until they're treated with antibiotics, which most people wouldn't do because they're like, there's nothing wrong with the animal. Um, their fertility doesn't come back. Um, which is entirely also possible with Breo. That could, he could have some sort of just underlying infection that's in his body that he hasn't kicked that he needs some antibiotics to treat. Breo! There ain't nothing there. Breo! No, sir. Breo! All right, stop. Nah. No, sir. Spoon, leave him alone. Spoon. <laughs> I think I said it on the other videos. There's just, there's just always something. There's always something that could potentially get in the way. There's always something that could potentially go wrong. Uh, the first time we tried tried to breed Starlight and Kazahana together, um, Kazahana wasn't fertile at the time, um, so it didn't work out. And or I say it didn't work out. As far as what the vet said when we took Starlight in to get her checked out, because she had an entire false pregnancy, as far as we are aware, they said it looked like she had been pregnant, so she would have absorbed the whole litter. Um, so who knows I can tell you it's definitely not an exact science and um, it's definitely not always easy nor is it just oh we'll put these two together <laughs> it really doesn't work that way plus we check we check our males prior to breedings to make sure they are healthy because of things that have happened in the past. So if something's wrong, um, we either try to correct it before the breeding arrives or, um, well, we gotta change plans. Now the Pomeranians, we haven't had an issue with them. I think that's kind of a given in the sense of diversity has a lot to do with fertility. Um, Pomeranians, they don't have the inbreeding that collies do. They don't have the propensity for gut skin issues that collies do. As a whole, don't take that as a well, definite because every breed has their set of issues health issues, temperament issues. Um, that's just, every single breed has something. What are you doing? She's eating the nut from the tree. Give me that. Whoa. Anyway. We'll try again with the horse after finding out if she's healthy. Uh, pyrometra is always a concern. Uh, they can have basically silent pyrometra. I believe they call it closed pyrometra. Um, so again, looking out for that. Although I don't think collies are prone to pyrometra. Mm. Uh, each breed can be more or less prone and lines of dogs can be more or less prone to pyrometra. Wait! 
Two. I didn't have anything specific in mind for conversations, so I'm just rambling. I just figured I'd show you the, all the dogs this morning. How they're doing. Edward. He hopefully has a home already. We're just waiting for them to move and then decide exactly. No, nine. Whether they want him or not. And we'll see how it goes then after they have him. Y'all need to slow down. Y'all are gonna hurt each other. Inkwell, looking for a home. I may or may not mention that already. He, um, I don't, I don't know whether I've already gone over that or not. He has hereditary Demodex. Um, so he's being cut from the program. But honestly, it's not. At first, I was kind of upset about it for a few reasons. Not really because he's structurally phenomenal or anything like that and to be honest temperament it, his temperament kind of sucks and i mean that in a breeding context not as a pet um as a pet he could be perfectly fine and i actually would expect him to get better after he's neutered to which we are getting him neutered um but as an intact male his temperament kind of sucks. Um, so, not a huge loss. Kazana! Kazana! Sammy! Stop licking yourself. Stop it. Um, but, I'm not set upset about it anymore because. I feel like I feel like the fact that he has hereditary demodex um, was actually kind of a blessing because we were struggling to decide whether we should use him or not and out of a kind of sort of desperation for diversity diversifying bloodlines we were going to use him but I think this is better um, I don't think he needs to be part of our program um, structurally, he doesn't have really anything to offer. He's very clunky, physically. Don't like a sheep. Um, and his temperament. He just... Stop. Um, stop. He's a bit of a brat. Quit. He's rude to the other males specifically, um, but to the females as well, and trying to mount and breed everyone and being very persistent about it and whiny and he started some fights, even at his young age, he started some fights with Arrow, um, more specifically, but some of the others, it just, I don't, he's not, he's not suited as a breeding dog. He has a nice head. I will say that. He has a nice head. <laughs> Sassy. You already told him. Let me get on to him. Um, but that's as far as it goes. The rest of his body is really jank. Or I should say for our liking, he's jank. What we like structurally. And doesn't improve upon what we're trying to improve on and have already improved on. Um, matter of fact, it goes, it would take away from, go backwards. So we would have to breed him to a really nice female. Um, it just, yeah, it's for the best. Sometimes things happen that are a little upsetting. 
that are actually just for the best. And I think this is one of those things. So no big deal. We'll just have to keep searching for prospect breeding prospects, which we do pretty much all the time. And there are a lot of people who are like, we have a ton of dogs already. Yeah, we do. And we don't really, you know, it doesn't bother us. Um, we're constantly looking to try and improve or add diversity. And if we can find that and we can get that, we will. And we'll use it when we feel it will be best used. Um, I mean, the animal will be included in the program where we see best fit and at best fit time. Fiction! Psst. If we have to put one on the shelf for a while, we will. Um, I personally don't like to do that with females, but males, you know, you can do that with pretty readily. There goes the me. Hey, leave the cat alone. Okay, well, I think that's it. I don't have much else to talk about. The video is almost 30 minutes long. We would love to get some imports, but so far we haven't found anyone. So far, we haven't found anyone that has been willing to export from their country. Um, but we'll get there. And some of them also are, are wanting to see where we've shown a dog before, you know, in the show ring. Um, titled them somewhere or another, even if it's not a lot of points. And we get that. Um, none of our dogs have been shown as of yet. But we are actually talking about, and I think going to try and pursue, to the best of our ability, um, showing in the ring, Lawlight and Starlight. Um, Starlight could be shown both AKC and UKC. Uh, Lawlight would have to be shown UKC because we're not going to tip her ears. Um, they have to have the ears tipped to be AKC shown. Um, and I ain't tipping that dog's ears. She's way too pretty to be tipping her ears. Starlight has naturally tipped ears. Um, and we're also looking into doing Fast Cat. Another little coursing stuff. Um, I think Peyton actually already ordered a, uh, what do you call it? A lure box. So it's a, it has a, a motor and all that in it and you run the lines and we're going to start practicing with some of the dogs that are interested. So then they may get titles there. Um, to us, it doesn't really mean much. But for other people, they, they feel like it um, shows the dog's capacity in all fields and, you know, like it makes them breeding worthy, I suppose, um, which I kind of get, although really where that should matter most with breeds is they can actually do what they originally did, what they were originally bred for. So in Collie's case, that would be, um, herding. Um, I don't think we have any herding trials around here. I'd have to try and look, um... The thing is, is that for herding, the dog has to have a very specific kind of mindset um, to be able to do it. And that may not necessarily even be conducive of a pet mindset, which I, we've mentioned before. We're breeding our dogs. 
Here I am trying to get onto the deaf dog. Um, <laughs> we're breeding dogs to be companions, to be solid, stable companions healthy companions um, so we don't expect them to be able to do all those other things um, but my opinion is that solid stable companions have the capacity to do all those things it's just whether or not you as the owner buyer whatever um, have the capacity to teach them because most dogs most dogs will do something or anything that you ask them to do. You just got to find out what it is that they love to do. Um, and that may not even be the thing that they were originally bred for, to be honest. It could be something else entirely that they absolutely love to do. Um, and that's okay. That's fine. Now, if we were specifically breeding dogs to be herders, then obviously that would be important to include in our program, but we're not. We're breeding them to be um, versatile, all around companions. They'll just do whatever you ask them to do. Doesn't mean they will be, you know, stellar at it, but they will do. That's the point. Um, now I wish to add to that. We don't put down people that decide to show or, you know, do trials or agility or any of those things. We think it's all should be fun to do. Um, and we would love to do whatever our dogs wanted to do, um, whatever they were excited about doing. The part of it that makes us hesitant, to, to be perfectly honest, um, is being judged by other breeders, other collie breeders, because we're not breeding for the standard. Um, you know, our dogs are collies, our palms are palms, but the, no, we're not breeding to the standard or what they think the standard is, because if you actually read the standard, they have some things wrong with what they consider to be a show dog type. Um, one of the biggest, most obvious things is the fact that collies are supposed to have a gay tail. That's in the standard. Um, and show collies don't have gay tails. <laughs> Matter of fact, they breed for the opposite. They breed for a very straight, uh, almost small tail, which I don't like. Like, Stranger has a really short tail. I like that. Let's see. Breo. Breo has a really short tail. Very short, straight tail. That's what they breed for. They're supposed to have a long, low-hanging gay tail. That's what they're supposed to have. <laughs> um, there are a few other things that I feel like is incorrect with what people breed for as a show. Standard, supposed standard collie. Um, that I don't feel like is standard according to what I'm reading, but... I, Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe I don't understand terminology. <laughs> <coughs> there we go. Um, I guess with our dogs, we're breeding closer to what we see a lot of the um, smooth UK collies look like. Um, our dogs look a lot like those. Um over there they kind of don't view rough and smooth collies as the same breed which is a little odd so they they breed them a bit different over there the rough collies over there are different they're very small um they have weird heads and the smooths um they look more like sight hounds a lot of times dude dude calm down Calm your b b b tootie down. Yeah, you. <laughs> oh, Lord. He's being a mess. Anyway, our dogs look more like that. That's more of what we like the look of. 
anyway. Or the smooth collies over in the UK. Mm. We liked some of the more showy line ones over here. Of the smooth, not really the roughs. The roughs are weird. Um, but not, it's kind of few and far between. Did I get that? How did y'all get that again? Drop it! Drop it! Drop it! Pigeon, drop it! No, ma'am. Drop it! Thank you. I'm not sure how they got the glove again. I must have dropped it somewhere. Anyway. So we want to do those things. We want to show some, although we're kind of scared. I'll say that. We're kind of scared. We're scared of the show people. They can be very rude and condescending. Um, and the judges can be very harsh and is equally condescending. And they can legitimately just kick you out if they don't like your dog and tell you never to come back. Um, again, that's AKC. UKC, they tend to be a lot nicer. Um, and more lenient on faults. And it being a fault, not a disqualification. Um, and agility and those other things. Love to do those things as well. Um, for the ones that enjoy it. That's kind of the key point for us is whatever dogs we choose to try and do things with, we want them to enjoy what they're doing. If they're not enjoying it, we're not going to force them to do it. Um, although I'm pretty sure we got some fast catters in the group. We're going to see how that goes. <laughs> It'll be fun. Look at him. You know, show Bodie. You ain't nothing, boy. You ain't nothing. He's just like his dad. He thinks he's something. <laughs> Watari, I think. Yeah, she heard me. <laughs> Watari. I think it's going to be really good at Fast Cat. Paladin, Lawlight, Sacer. Um, the Chorus. Probably. Um, you might would do it, possibly, if we can convince her to do it. Just depends on each one. I wish, what I wish, as a closing note, on all people that do competitions um, with animals, is that they would just loosen up. And have fun because that was in my opinion that was the original purpose or if it wasn't the original purpose that should be the purpose now because um, most dogs aren't doing what they were originally bred for so there's nothing to prove um, so why can't we just have fun Because I think so many people just want to have fun with their animal. And when you are being a prude about everything. Because it doesn't look right for the breed. Or, you know, it has some sort of fault. Or, in our dog's cases, the ears aren't tipped. It's just so rude. And it's kind of cruel, to be honest. Because we just want to have fun with our dogs. We want to take them and have fun. We don't want to be judged for the way that we are choosing to do things. Because we know the way we are choosing to do things is right for the dogs, um, for the breed, and for the buyers, for the, the new owners to the puppies. We know what we are doing is right. It's just... 
uh, frustrating, you know? It hurts when you have people that decide to attack you. For what reason? Just because it's written somewhere that they should look a certain way? And yet, the total opposite happens in the, the uh, human realm. You're not allowed to judge anyone for anything. You're not allowed to judge them for nothing. Which is crazy, in my mind, that you can look that way at people, and yet um, you can't do the same for animals and their handlers. It's weird to me. I digress. A small little rant. <laughs> I probably sound like my voice didn't change at all. But believe me when I say I'm very passionate about all those things. <laughs> we just, uh, we bottle it up deep inside a lot of times. <laughs> Until it comes out in a rage. She says, I would love for someone to take me and make me a couch potato because that's what I want in life. Suki just wants to be a couch potato. Alright. Bye bye everyone. Talk to you later.